Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this Soundbites module, entitled Part 2 of Bedside Ultrasound of the Aorta, we'll go further on our discussion of bedside ultrasonography of the aorta and detection of abdominal aortic aneurysms. We'll begin with a review of the definitions and the anatomy of the types of abdominal aortic aneurysms that you may encounter in the emergency department. We'll look at a number of ultrasound images demonstrating AAAs, and we'll conclude with a discussion of the potential pitfalls in bedside imaging of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. This illustration shows the types of abdominal aortic aneurysms that may be encountered in clinical practice. The more common type of abdominal aortic aneurysm is defined as fusiform or diffuse dilatation of the abdominal aorta. Remember that a AAA is defined as an aortic diameter greater than 3 centimeters. Let's start by looking at the picture towards the far left. What we see here is a diffuse dilatation of the aorta beginning at the level below the renals and ending just above bifurcation into the iliac arteries. Notice the picture towards the middle. Some of these fusiform aneurysms can extend from the abdominal aorta all the way down into the iliac artery. Now the less common type of abdominal aortic aneurysm, as known as saccular, is shown in the picture to the far right, where you have a localized outpouching of the abdominal wall. This next illustration makes the point that choosing the correct probe orientation is very important in terms of getting a correct measurement of the aorta due to the cylinder effect. Let's look at the two long axis views of the probes along the aorta as shown towards the left of the image here. Beginning in probe position 1, we see a side slice in which the probe is positioned towards the side of the aorta and underestimating the true diameter of the aortic lumen. We can see that positioning the probe towards the middle of the image as shown here in probe position 2 will get a correct diameter, but this can be difficult to ascertain using the long axis orientation. A better orientation is to position the probe in the short axis configuration as shown in probe position 3. One can then get a sense in terms of the true lumen and get the best measurements of the abdominal aortic aneurysm. In the last illustration, we made the point that it's important to image the abdominal aortic aneurysm for an accurate dimension in the short axis configuration, but it's also very important to include outer wall to outer wall in the measurements of the abdominal aortic aneurysm. Here we can see a measurement of a AAA only including the inner lumen, and notice that we could vastly underestimate the true diameter of this very large AAA. Here's the correct dimensions of the abdominal aortic aneurysm, and notice here that we're measuring anterior, posterior, and laterally, including the thrombus that coats the outer walls of this abdominal aortic aneurysm, in addition to the true lumen, and we get an outstanding number of 8 by 8 centimeters on this AAA. Here's a short axis view of a very large abdominal aortic aneurysm in a patient who presented to the emergency department with abdominal and back pain. And with a small indicator arrow, I'm showing in the B-mode image towards the left the large AAA, and there's the spine, which is our landmark for determination of the aorta. And we can see the color power Doppler image towards the right, showing pulsations of blood within this very large AAA. Next, we're going to measure this abdominal aortic aneurysm, and notice we have a short axis configuration including outer wall to outer wall that includes the inner lumen and the outer thrombus, and we have a measurement of 4.8 by 4.9 centimeters, making a criteria of a AAA greater than 3 centimeters. This video clip is another short axis orientation of a very large AAA in a patient who presented to the ED with abdominal pain. We mark the spine as our landmark, and on anterior to the spine, we see a very large AAA. Notice the true lumen and the accumulation of thrombus that's seen substantially anterior to the true lumen. Next, we'll measure this AAA, and here we've placed our calipers from outer wall to outer wall in a short axis configuration, and we come up with an aneurysm of 6.3 by 5.8 centimeters, again making the criteria of a very large AAA greater than 3 centimeters. This video clip shows a very interesting AAA with multiple onion skin layers of thrombus surrounding a very small lumen towards the middle of the AAA. And notice again that we could vastly underestimate the true dimensions of this AAA if all we included was the lumen. We see here a very large burden of clot surrounding the lumen circumferentially in a short axis orientation. Next, we're going to position the probe in a long axis orientation, and I'd like to categorize this as the subway sandwich sign. And what we see here is the lumen making up the filling of our subway sandwich, and notice the anterior and posterior burden of clot making up the loaves of the bread circumferentially surrounding the lumen. So a very large AAA in long axis configuration.
Next, we're going to measure this AAA, and here we're putting the calipers from anterior, posterior, and laterally, trying to add that lumen and the thrombus to our measurements. And I came up with a measurement that was 6.3 by 6.16 centimeters, again, making the definition of a AAA. This image is a short axis configuration showing an extremely large AAA in a patient who presented to the ED with abdominal pain during a snowstorm in New York City in January. Notice the very large AAA and the chaotic flow of blood inside. You can almost see the thrombus deposition from the swirls of blood in this very large AAA. Here's a long axis configuration of the same AAA, and again, we can almost take the patient's heartbeat or pulse by measuring the movements of the swirls of blood within this chaotic flow of blood within the large AAA. And we can see the deposition of the thrombus both on the anterior and posterior walls of this very large AAA. Here we're putting color power Doppler down to again show that this is a vascular structure and what's interesting is again we can see the chaotic flow of blood round and round within this AAA that contributes to the substantial burden of clot formation that occurs on a AAA. In the next image, we're going to measure this gigantic abdominal aortic aneurysm in the short axis orientation, and we measure from outer wall to outer wall. We get a measurement of 8.8 .8 by 8.6 centimeters. So this patient went directly to the operating room and had successful placement of a stent. This is a rare video clip showing a saccular abdominal aortic aneurysm in a patient who presented to the ED with epigastric abdominal pain. We have the probe positioned in a long axis configuration, superior to the left. And we see the aorta running from left to right, and we see an outpouching of the aorta coming anteriorly there. That's a saccular aneurysm, and as we measure it, we come up with a measurement of 4.45 centimeters. As the patient was, was symptomatic with epigastric abdominal pain over this aneurysm, she went directly to the operating room for operative repair. Let's go over some pitfalls and useful hints for imaging of the abdominal aorta. At times, the aorta may be difficult to see, secondary to excess bowel gas. We may press the transducer more firmly towards the spine to displace the bowel gas and get a look at that aorta. If the patient has a high body mass index, we can use a lower frequency to increase penetration get, and to get a better look at the abdominal aorta. Using color Doppler can help us to identify vessels and be careful because there are times where the spine may look like a AAA. But again, close attention to the spine and the location of vascular structures anteriorly will clear that up. This video clip shows an example where the spine could be mistaken as a large abdominal aortic aneurysm. Notice that it has the appearance of a dark structure within the abdomen, and at first glance it could look like an abdominal aortic aneurysm. However, we note that there's pulsatile structures anterior to the spine. We see the aorta to the left and the IVC towards the patient's right side. We could also use color power Doppler to differentiate the vascular structures of the aorta and IVC versus the spine. This ultrasound image shows another interesting pitfall. At first glance, we see a very large dark structure towards the top of the picture here that could be mistaken as a very large abdominal aortic aneurysm. But again, close attention to the location of the spine posteriorly will help us out. Notice we see the bone table of the spine. Notice just anterior to the spine, we actually can see here the aorta. This very large structure is actually a very large mesenteric cyst, and it failed to have pulsations with power color Doppler. In conclusion, thanks for joining me for the Sound Bites module going over part two of bedside ultrasound of the aorta. Hopefully through this module, you now understand the definition of and anatomy found on bedside ultrasound imaging of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. And now you can use bedside sonography as a rapid diagnostic tool for picking up a AAA. Remember that if the patient has unstable hemodynamics and a large AAA is seen on bedside sonography, that patient must be assumed to have a rupturing AAA. Using bedside sonography, we can facilitate timely operative management of these patients and possibly save a life. So I hope to see you back in the future as Soundbites continues.